Since 2019, I've written well over a million words of YouTube scripts, and you know what? I still find making videos hard. But over that time, I've discovered some unconventional growth tricks that I really wish I'd known sooner because they unstick you when you're feeling stuck and they enable you to just get that video made and posted. To prove the power of this first one, which is probably the ultimate YouTube productivity hack, what I'm gonna do is set a timer for two hours and write a script. And then when that timer ends, no matter what state this is in, I'm gonna film it, I'm gonna edit it, and then I'm gonna upload it to this channel. And at the end, I'll reveal it to you, even if it's not finished. Which is gonna be interesting because sometimes my scripts can take eight to nine hours to write, but I feel like showing you this productivity hack in action will allow you to judge whether or not it's effective or not. Okay, so let me explain how this productivity hack works so you can use it to save hours. Way back, some dude came up with this idea that if you give yourself a long time to complete a task, it will take you that long. But if you reduce your time, half it, even give yourself a quarter of the time that you would usually, you still get the same task done. This is because with less time, there is more stakes and urgency, so it causes you to focus on only the things that get the task complete. Whereas if I gave myself eight hours to write, then I'd just end up on Discord chatting to people or on my phone or singing. Let's get it on in public. It's known as Parkinson's law and it's backed by science. So the next time you start making a video, set a time limit. That might be for ideation or writing or editing. You need to make sure it makes you feel almost uncomfortable and witness yourself achieve productivity levels you didn't think were possible. Always turn your email off because it's, uh, you're just going to get distracted. Two hours isn't that long. Uh, where was I? I just distracted myself talking to you. Moving us on to the next hack, which I recently discovered enabled me to write faster in a more creative way, and it actually made me happier too. And it's why I'm currently sat in that chair writing. So let me explain how this simple trick works. I am a digital nomad. That is basically a posh word for a homeless man who lives in Airbnbs. <laughs> Each month, I moved to a different one. One month, I booked my Airbnb and I walked in and I started working on scripts, but it just felt like I was typing through treacle. I couldn't come up with any ideas. I was struggling to string words together. And this went on for an entire month. Now, I just thought I was burnt out or tired, but that wasn't it. Come the end of the month, I had to move to another Airbnb, into the one that you can see on screen right now. And I started typing, and it was like the floodgates had opened. It was the easiest I've ever found making videos. And that's where I'm sat where I'm sat right there. That's not comfortable. Posture. Always look after your posture. Because I realized that the environment you are in plays a massive part in the ease of creativity. And for me in particular, having a lot of natural light streaming into the room totally transforms my ability and my productivity. And it's not just me. Roberto Blake recently tweeted something similar. So if you're feeling stuck, try writing outside or by a window or just tidy your environment and you might just find it changes everything fast. Let me explain the next thing I wish I knew sooner as fast as I can so I can go back to writing this script. But it's important that I explain it and that I stop doing it myself because it just stops videos is getting made, but it comes at a bit of a cost that concerns me. So let me explain. Look at this picture. It looks great, right? You'd probably hang it on your wall. Well, I would if I wasn't homeless. Now let's compare it to this picture. It looks great too, right? But which one do you prefer? The first one took 10 hours to produce. The second took 12. Would you pay more for this one than that one? Probably not. This is YouTube through and through. We spend our lives trying to perfect our content, but the truth is often getting it to 80% is going to be good enough to get results. That final 20% we fraternize over often doesn't have enough impact with our viewers to be worth the effort. And worse, if you consistently strive for what you believe to be perfection, it wastes a ton of time and it could actually just stop you making videos. And that is the whole point of this game. And let me tell you a little secret. In my most viewed video of all time, I'm out of focus. I don't even think anyone ever commented on it. So that's the strategy I'm going to be using on this script. And it kind of scares me because I've not posted a video to Film Booth for a while. And I don't want people to be like, oh, he's lost it. Bringing us on to the next thing you'll wish on you sooner, because if you can just accept this to be true, this happens, this happens, and this happens. And I know it does because that's the the data of people I work with and I have hundreds of wins all caused by the same change they all made. So I want you to imagine there's this one skill you can learn to explode on YouTube that won't just blow up your channel but also your social media, your business, it's going to help you find editors, writers, it'll even land you more dates. I'm not even kidding, you can use it on Bumble too. And it's why I have no matches. Too handsome for this stupid app anyway. It's also why in Hollywood when they make 99% of films, they don't give actors a list of bullet points to just riff and tell the entire story from. Instead, they write a script to ensure that viewers are always 100% engaged and invested. Because if they're not, they get a massive flop. Oh, apart from the classic French film from the 1920s, that was off bullet points. Shut up in the comments, you. Now YouTube's the same, but here writing scripts is 10 times more powerful because when you practice hooks and setups and retention tactics, you can then use these in your social media media posts to get attention, as well as your marketing, as well as your emails. So writing for educators is the most powerful YouTube skill on the planet. You just have to get over the initial learning curve and you will be on the fast track road to successful Tennessee. Huh. It's got a match. Julia from successful Tennessee. It's not real, is it?
Julia's not, she's not real. Here's a little tip for writing. So what I'll do is I'll write a few lines and I'll go back and I'll just present them out loud like I'm talking to you. Like he just went out there and documented himself doing it and the results were incredible. You can kind of hear it in your own voice and then I'm always usually thinking at the same time, can I make this paragraph a bit shorter? Can I make it simpler? But often what I'll do is I'll just write the first version and then I'll go back and then the second round where I'm starting to edit it, that's what I'm thinking. More dramatic words, is this entertaining? Is it informative? And how do I make this shorter and more to the point? That's kind of it. Okay, so the next thing I wish I'd known sooner, it would have helped me post content more often and make better videos that got more views with less effort, much less. So let me explain. Have you ever made a video and you just kind of like rushed it out? You put way less effort and thought into it and it absolutely took off and outperformed all those other higher effort videos you've made in the past. What most people do when this happens is instantly tell themselves, oh good, I don't have to put much work into my future videos now. The viewers want that. But the reason people think this low effort video has worked so well is incorrect. Now I realised what was actually happening here when I went through a bit of a growth plateau. So years ago I blew up pretty fast and some of you sexy legends who have been watching me for years you might remember. And then like most of the moment channels my views suddenly slowed down and I was kind of like Rrr. one day I was trying to find a pattern in all the biggest videos as to why they'd done so well so that I could try and make this comeback and I said to someone all my best performing videos were the easiest ideas I ever came up with they practically wrote themselves and that is when it clicked when coming up with ideas or writing or editing the best ideas are often the ones that come to us with the least friction this is why those low effort videos people make do really well because they went with the most obvious idea and didn't overcomplicate things and it worked so the next time you get stuck anywhere on YouTube, just ask yourself this. Is this a struggle because it just doesn't really work and I'm trying to force it? Or should I just go for something more obvious and put that on the back burner for another time? But a word of warning, this doesn't mean make what you want. You still need to research and research? research and find the right videos to make and understand your audience. But when you have that down, trusting your instincts could be your secret source. But what if things get so tough you just can't get unstuck? So I'm halfway through the time limit now and things have been going pretty well, but I've got to a point where I've just kind of hit a block. I'm struggling to come up with a way to make this more interesting so that you guys will hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. <laughs> you know. But this next thing I wish I knew sooner, you're gonna love because it's gonna get me out of this mess. It's gonna get you out of overwhelm too. And the best thing about it is you just stop writing. And the even better thing about it is for me, I get to go on one of these. There she is, my baby. These are the best things about Dubai. So sometimes I just fly around Dubai on these things at night when I'm bored. Try and set like a record for the time I'm getting around the marina on. Today I'm gonna try and get a 112 to defeat Mark Risley. I've never even seen a 113. If you get that reference, you need to comment. Here we go, the 112. I'm typing a storm on the line. <laughs> The key is to not kill anyone. It's a bad idea to kill people in the UAE, ladies. Believe it or not, this is actually the hack flying around on one of these. And now I will stop wasting time flying around on my cool scooter. And I'll go back to explain why you should do it too. But first, maybe one more lap. Yeah. Move it, boys. Yeah. All right, stop here. All right, so I've wasted about 10 minutes, but every time I ever get stuck writing or doing anything creative now, I simply stop, go outside, get a bit of nature, go for a walk, 10 minutes later, I come back and everything just seems to have worked its way out. When we're too close to our content, it's very hard to see obvious answers sometimes, so that little break makes all the difference. Anyway, I've got to get back on with this script because time is ticking. The next thing I wish I knew sooner, I found very hard to come to terms with. But I can honestly say it changed my life. And without this, I'd have no following or no business. And those things built me a pretty cool lifestyle where I can travel the world and do whatever the heck I want when I want. And this change happened because I embraced it. And it works like this. So if I told you not to put your hand in the fire because it might hurt versus don't put your hand in the fire because it's going to melt your fingers to the bone and it's going to cause you to scream in agony. And it might mean you can never swipe right again. Which person are you going to listen to? On YouTube, if you want your viewers to pay attention, you have to make them realize why what you're about to say is critical so they don't just ignore you. Use your words to create a feeling of urgency and pump up the stakes of what will happen if they do drift off. I mean, let's just rewind this video and listen to what I said when I set up the entire section of this video. But I can honestly say it changed my life. And without this, I'd have no following or no business. And those things built me a pretty cool lifestyle where I can travel the world and do whatever the heck I want when I want. And this change happened because I embraced it. And it works like this. Can you see what I did there? If you make it sound like they're going to get an average result or just solve an average problem, you're going to get an average response. Okay, that is the time up. 
Is it as refined as I'd like? No. Is it as funny as I like? Not really. Is it a bit too long? Yes. Is there some bits I probably would have just completely cut out? Definitely. But there are some fun moments in there, and there was one thing that I've done where about 18 months ago I came up with the idea for it, and I finally found a place to put it into a video. I think you're gonna like it. But before I reveal it to you, I just want to hit you with one more thing I wish I'd known sooner, because this is a real channel killer, and sadly, it's called by people like you. So let me explain. So when I broke out on YouTube, every video got the same handful of comments. Ed, this editing's too fast. And you know what? They were right. I actually thought it was too fast too. But the thing is, the channel was growing faster than ever, so what am I supposed to do? Listen to the five or six people saying it's too fast, or the hundreds of thousands who were saying nothing? In fact, all they were doing was watching and growing the channel at a pretty amazing rate, so I just stuck to what worked. When you're a smaller channel in particular, it feels like one comment represents your entire audience, so the trap to avoid here is not to make Make decisions based just on these people. Everyone has different tastes, things are subjective, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you get loads of comments saying the same thing, it's probably a sign, but be careful because if you make a change based on them only, you might actually wreck the thing your viewers loved in the first place. So now it's time to reveal the video that I wrote in just two hours so that you can judge Parkinson's law for yourself. But first, there's just one other small issue. So by sharing all of this stuff that I wish I'd known sooner with you, I'm hoping I can fast track you and stop you making mistakes that took me years to work out. The thing is, these are only a small selection of them, so you need to make sure you stop making these and a handful of others too. But the good news is, this video here is going to teach you what those things are and stop you making some of the biggest mistakes on YouTube. But Ed, how do we watch the video you wrote as fast as you could? Well, you just did. Bom, bom, bom. 